Hey there friends, it's Kate and welcome back to my channel, Golden State Educate. So for today's video, I thought I would film it in my classroom library, not only because it is one of my favorite parts of my classroom, but I also thought it would be the perfect setting to talk about today's topic, which is all about my reading groups. So I am a second year, second grade teacher here in Northern California. I've been vlogging my journey since I began my first year of teaching. If you didn't already know, I was a first year kindergarten teacher last year, and now I am moving on up at the same school. So I teach second grade now, and it has gone so well. Um, I had an awesome experience with student teaching. I student taught in a second grade class and my mentor teacher had probably one of the best um, introductions for reading groups I had ever seen. So I got so much of my knowledge and expertise on teaching reading groups from her. I've also done a lot of observations in other primary classrooms um, and just having taught kindergarten last year and now teaching second grade, I think I have a really strong grasp on what I wanted for reading groups, my expectations for reading groups, um, and how I wanted to roll them out this year. So it is currently the fifth week of school. This is our first week really, really diving into reading groups um, and making sure that we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. And I'm happy to say that it's gone so well so far. It's a lot of work to start reading groups. It's a lot of work um, just trying to get it started from the ground up the first few weeks of school. But I'm going to tell you in this video everything that I do for reading groups, how I introduce reading groups on day one, everything that we did to build the system that we have now, um, just to make sure that everyone knows what is expected of them, the expectations, the routines, the procedures. Everyone knows everything. Everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing. So um, I'm happy to say that our first full week of doing reading groups has gone really well, and I really only expect it to get better from this point. So if you see me looking down, I have my notes. I also got a lot of my um, information for reading groups off of finding so many different things on the internet, literally scouring the internet, scouring books. I read the Daily Five book. I read so many different things about how to start reading groups. So I wanted to make this video for you. I've talked about it in a few of my most recent vlogs. If you haven't checked those out, I'll have them linked above in the cards and down below in the description box as well. Um, but so many people were saying, how are you making this happen? Like, what exactly are you using? How did you um, ensure success? with your primary students in teaching them how to do reading groups. So I thought I would put it all together into this one video. I actually am part of a Facebook group as well and I got some I got an awesome document from that Facebook group so I'll have the document linked down below it's like 30 pages though so I thought I would try to make it a little bit more concise in this video but there's definitely some great tips and tricks in that as well so throughout a lot of my research on reading groups I came upon the daily five I'm sure you know about the daily five but if you didn't already know the daily five is essentially reading to self so reading stamina reading to self reading to someone else listening to reading or having some aspect of like technology, some kind of tech component. There's also a word work station and there's also a writing station. So that would be five different daily five <laughs> centers that students are normally going to do every single day. So daily five looks a little bit different in my classroom. We don't have enough time to do all five stations every day. I also don't find that the reading to someone is super necessary in my classroom. And because this is reading groups, I want to be meeting with certain kids. So the daily five looks a little bit different. For us, I do two rotations every day, but the students will be able to get to all of those five stations, um, you know, throughout the course of the week. So for us, our daily five looks like time with the teacher, so a teacher table. There's also a reading to self um, or some kind of reading with a uh, reading reflection sheet. I also have the technology, so that would be using some of our tech apps that we are required to use um, at my school. There's also a word workstation or like a spelling practice station, and then finally a writing station. So even though all of these five things don't happen every single day. Every student will get the opportunity to complete these five things throughout the course of the week. I also have a different situation at my school that I'm not really gonna get into because it may not apply to everyone, but two days a week, I also have an intervention specialist. So I have two of my groups those days and she has two of my groups those days. So I will have a screenshot of how <laughs> our reading groups work uh, right now on the screen. And then I'll also kind of 
put that in the screen <laughs> as the video goes so that way it makes more sense and you can kind of follow along with a visual of what our schedule looks like just because that might be a little bit easier to follow. So just to get started from the ground up, how we started reading groups um, and how I rolled all of this out. So I rolled it out in a three week period. So by the end of the third week, we knew how to do all of the different things. The fourth week we started practicing, rotating from all of those stations and then I also kind of started and then I also introduced a teacher component so I started pulling students back doing some assessments and we kind of practiced the rotation of what that would look like um, if they were coming to the teacher table so now that we're on week five we've done all of the stations it's gone really well and I'm really excited about that so the first week of school we only had three days of school that week uh, I didn't really begin talking about this yet but I did tease that we were going to be having some reading challenges and they were getting really excited for it the goal for the first week was just reading stamina after three weeks at school the students were very curious about my library and they wanted to check it out so I gave them a few minutes just to explore the books see what was in there. They practiced picking them out of the basket, putting them back in the basket, um, and they had a really good time with that. After I allowed them to just kind of explore the library, we talked about how it's important to choose a book that's on their correct level, which is the I pick method. So it's kind of hard to see because it's behind me, but I will put a picture on the screen of what the I pick method is. It's essentially you choose a book, you make sure you look through the pages and you make sure that you're reading it for a purpose. Why do you want to read that book? As you continue on, see if it seems interesting. You know, sometimes a book looks interesting and we have a purpose for wanting to read it, but once we open it, it doesn't actually look that interesting, so we might want to put it back. The students know that if it does continue to pique their interest, they should begin reading the words. And if they can comprehend all of the words, or most of the words, then it should be a good book. As they keep going, there's a check for understanding and saying that after a few pages, do they understand what they're reading? Do they know the words that they're reading? Um, and if so, that's a good book. If they start reading through the book and it stops checking off some of these boxes, they'll know that it's not a good book for them and they can put it back. So we practice choosing books on our level and it was so nice to see the students really using their metacognition and thinking about thinking, you know, like they were looking through the books, deciding if that was a good book for them. If it was a good book, they would keep it. If it wasn't a good book, they would put it back. So we really got into the practice of that all during the first day. So once we had explored the library, once we had picked out a few books that were good for us, it was time to get started on our reading stamina challenge. Preface this with this is one of the most important things we're going to do all year. You know, we need to know how to read a book. So what does that look like? That looks like me opening up the book, noticing the pictures, following along with the words, reading it as I go. What does that sound like? Does it sound like me whispering to my friend? Does it sound like me, you know, drumming on the desk? No, it sounds like peace and quiet. My students know that they can find a comfy spot in the classroom, spread out with their books, and then once they choose their spot, they have their spot and they have their stack of books and they cannot move from that spot. They are stuck there. So I showed our reading stamina chart and I set the expectation that every day we we're going to add to the chart. So we started off with two minutes on the first day. They only read for two minutes. We all cheered when it was done. We filled in our two on our reading stamina challenge and then we let it go and started it up again the next day. So we, our goal for the end of the first week was to know how to check out books, um, pick a book that's good for us, and then silently read for 10 minutes. So on Monday we read for two minutes, on Tuesday we read for four minutes, on Wednesday we read for six and so on until 10. So our goal for the first week was just to be able to read silently for 10, but 10 minutes with books that were on our I pick level. Also during the first week at a separate part of our day, we were also learning how to use tech apps. That first week of school, um, our district really is insistent on teaching the students uh, how to access our reading and math tech games um, and different things. So we use Raz Kids. We also use Epic for kind of free reading. And then we also use iReady Reading. So if you're from the same place as me or if you're familiar with those tech things, you'll know about them. I'm not going to jump into them in this video. You can check them out if you want to, but I'm sure your district requires you to use some kind of technology app. So um, even though it wasn't a component of our reading groups to start with, they know how to pick a good book and they know how to access those apps. So it was really nice. We would practice, you know, a couple minutes of 
reading silently, we would practice a couple minutes on the app and then switch back and forth throughout the week. So by the end of the first week, they knew how to use the tech apps and they also knew how to choose a book, good book and read silently. So jumping into the second week, we had already had two stations down. We were practicing reading quietly on our way to 20 minutes. And then the second thing was our reading apps. So it was able, so I was able to introduce our third station, which was word work. Our goal for the end of week two was to have three solid rotations. So end of week two, we were going to be able to read for 20 minutes and successfully complete our reading stamina challenge. We were also going to be able to access all of our technology apps, and we were going to have an understanding of how to do five different word work activities. So like I said, we continued to build on our reading stamina challenge. We started the second week with 12 minutes, 14 minutes, 16, 18, and up to 20 minutes. We also began using our tech apps, and then every day I would introduce a new word work activity. Some of my favorite word work activities are from Lucky Little Learners on TPT. I also love Maylene Call, Mrs. Call's Campers. She has a great word work bundle, and I'll have both of those linked down below. So I chose five of what seemed to be the easiest and or most engaging activities, um, and I taught one of those to my students each day. So by the end of the week, they knew how to do all of those five activities, and they knew that for the weeks to come. Whenever word work comes up, they would choose from one of those activities. So here is our word work station. Um, all of the WWs mean word work. So these are all of the um, word work activities that I taught to my students. So the first one is ghost words. The students write the word in a crayon, um, in a white crayon, and then they can go over it with markers. The next one is rainbow writing, so the students can write their words multiple times. Each word gets a different color and it is repeated on the line and then switching to a new line means switching a color and switching the word. So they can practice their words this way. This one is roll and write, so I'm kind of running low on these ones, but essentially the students will roll the dice and the color will tell them what color to write their word in the box. They love this one, obviously, because it's always out at the end of the week, so I would highly recommend that one. There's also the flashlight, which they also really like this one, so the students will write their words and then they use a highlighter to highlight the vowels. This one is just four ways. The students can practice writing their um, spelling words in a pencil, in one of these fun pens. They can also use a crayon and a marker. And then the last one, I didn't even teach this one because, you know, they understand they just have to write their words in ABC order. This is the least popular one, but the easiest one for me to have, so that is always an option. This was really nice because we really started getting into the practice of our reading rotations. So on the first day, we did 12 minutes of silent reading, we did 12 minutes of technology time, and 12 minutes of our word workstation. The next day we were able to bump it up because we had done more of our reading stamina. So it looked like 14 minutes of reading stamina, 14 minutes of tech time, 14 minutes of learning how to do our new word workstation. The next day was 16, 16, and 16. So it was really nice by the end of the second week of school, we were already doing a full hour of reading groups. We were doing a full hour with the 20 minutes of reading stamina, 20 minutes of tech time, and 20 minutes of our word work. Week number three, we were doing so well. I was seriously so proud of my second grade students. Like I said, a lot of them hadn't been to school since kindergarten. Um, I also have a really well-behaved class, so maybe if you have a little bit more of a squirrely bunch, this might take a little bit longer, but I just find that setting the expectations and having goals for them to reach as they go really incentivizes the process and they want to do it. So they knew that when we completed our reading stamina challenge if we got to 20 minutes they would get two pieces of candy and they were really excited about that so that kept them going throughout the first two weeks and then we were ready to jump into week three by the end of week three our goal was to be able to do all of our word work activities be able to read silently for 20 minutes be able to access technology apps and also be able to do independent writing activities so i structured our independent writing time very simply very easily the most that they'll have for this in our actual reading groups is only 20 minutes so i introduced a writing topic to them we practiced how to do a little brainstorm and think about some things that we would want to write about on that topic. And then we practiced writing three to five sentences depending on their writing abilities. So I'm getting all of my writing prompts from the same bundle. I'll have it linked down below. I think there's like 
maybe over 150 or over 200 writing prompts and all of them are really primary friendly and we've really enjoyed doing that. So what I would do is introduce the topic um, and then we would brainstorm a couple of ideas. At that point, I would give the students a few different sentence stems to maybe get them started um, and also assist the students who aren't quite um, at a higher writing level yet. Our writing station was definitely the trickiest, so it's nice that students are really only going to it twice a week. I hope to build our writing abilities throughout the year. There's definitely some students that I have that are super high writers and we're able to easily answer the prompt in complete sentences in five to six sentences, so that was really great. But, being, but doing this definitely showed me which students are not able to write to the prompt independently, so because of that, I had to tweak our instruction a little bit, but that was okay. So what it looked like for the third week of school was we were practicing two rotations at a time. We would either do reading stamina and word work or tech and writing. So there's like some kind of chill, relaxed, and then another higher order thinking group so if they're reading to themselves that's not too hard of a task but then they would do word work after that if they're doing tech that's not too hard of a task but then they'd be doing writing after that so we did the same thing on Monday Wednesday and Friday and that was word work and read to self on Tuesday and Thursday we did tech and writing finally on the fourth week of school we were in school for an entire month and it was time to really get our process started so at this point I was pulling students back kind of making groups testing out different groups assessing students that I hadn't gotten a chance to assess before and we really started everything going so every day we were able to do two rotations um, and those switched throughout the week so again I will have it posted our reading schedule up here um, and just how that has been working out for us and it was great I honestly feel like building building everything step by step slowly introducing it slowly stating our expectations and getting the students where I needed to be really eliminated all of the problems and all of the questions we had so even though it took a while by the fifth week of school we're here, we made it, we had an awesome week this week. There were very few questions, but the greatest part is even if they did have questions, there was someone in their group who was able to answer it. So, so far so good for us. I will continue to update you guys on how everything goes, um, but I found that this schedule really works for us. They aren't too tired by the end of it. Two 20 to 25 minute rotations really works for us. Unfortunately, because we only do two groups a day, um, I'm able to see my struggling readers four days a week. I'm only able to see my more advanced readers two days a week, but luckily the other two days they are with a reading interventionist getting that higher order thinking practice. So it honestly works out for us. The student, every student gets to meet with a teacher at least four days a week, and the one day that they aren't meeting with the teacher, they are working on an independent center activity. Um, and so far it worked out this week. So I really only see it going up from here. I'm gonna have all of the notes that I can have linked down below and that document that I was kind of roughly following. Um, hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully I explained this um, in a way that was <laughs> easy to understand. There's definitely a lot of moving parts when it comes to introducing reading groups um, and especially introducing reading groups to primary students. As long as you set your expectations early on, go slow and build with them over time. Honestly, think this will go so well for you. So I hope it does. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I would love to interact with you all there. Make sure to follow me on Instagram if you aren't already. It's just Golden State Educate. I try to post on there throughout the week. So if you don't want to wait until the end of the week to see a vlog of everything we did, make sure to follow me there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.